guys, it's Ivan and today I wanted to show you what it's like to attend a virtual conference. So I am presenting at this conference. The conference is actually called the Yale Boucher Conference on Diversity and Graduate Education. So I'm presenting one of my recent research projects that I'm working on and that's going to happen in the next hour and a half. Right now we are listening to a guest speaker, but I wanted to show you what it's like to attend a virtual conference. That way you're better prepared yourself to attend a conference like this when you are in graduate school. So here's what the platform looks like. Um, this is a virtual conference, and so I'm trying to figure out how to go into, like, they have like a guest speaker, so I'm going to try to figure out how to get into that room um, before presentations start at 11. In a shade of blue, pragmatism and the politics of black America. And cowards, all of which results, in my view, in an environment in which asking hard questions and challenging the received wisdom or better taking rude positions. Remember Saeed's definition, right? He, by professionalism of thinking one's work, of one's work as an intellectual, as something we do for a living. Mm -hmm. Between the hours of nine and five, with one eye on the clock and another cocked at what is considered to be proper professional behavior, not rocking the boat. Deep thinkers in their relevant areas you see so professionalism as i'm reading it right is 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 really about a certain kind of socialization towards the marketplace that interrupts uh, uh all right, you guys, so right now i just finished listening to the guest speaker i forgot his i think his name was like eddie god i think i'll put an image of him right here but um but something interesting that he was talking about was this idea of being an amateur in academia. So when you're a graduate student, he said it was important for us to um, consider that amateurish um, ideologies and amateurish um, identity, I guess, that we hold as graduate students and to really use that to build ourselves to that tenure track professor, professor or that professional in higher education, whatever our career goal is. But he says that we shouldn't have to, um, you know, just think about publishing, publishing, publishing and conducting work and attending conferences that we should take some time to reflect and really deeply read the literature that we are reading and really gain that knowledge so that when we, when we become professors or professionals, we are able to fully employ what we're, what we're learning in the classroom. So I thought it was an interesting point that he was making when he was discussing this amateur identity that we all hold once we enter the academy as graduate students. All right, so right now I'm actually um, taking some notes and preparing for my presentation. I do have to get on the Zoom call at 10.30, which is a little bit earlier, because they want to make sure that we have a mic check, a visual check, and make sure that we are able to share our PowerPoint presentation during our time to present, obviously. So they're pretty much doing like a little um, pre presentation mic check if you want to call it so right now i am actually preparing for my presentation as you can see i have my slide deck here and then over here i'm taking some notes one of the things that i do struggle with when i'm presenting is the transition from um, slide to slide so i'm writing just kind of some transition words that i want to say so for example at the beginning i'm gonna um introduce myself right and then i'm gonna kind of talk about like the title of the presentation then overall um, literature etc right I'm so nervous for the presentation that I even spelled hello wrong okay, so I wanted to give you a couple of tips for attending virtual conferences so for me I had to walk at least 30 minutes from my apartment to campus I'm, I'm you know I came to campus because I want to make sure that I have reliable internet and that I'm in a quiet space and so I'm in my office right now that I have as a graduate PhD student um, at the University of California San Diego but um, what I'm trying to say is that I ended up you know packing my my um, blazer in my backpack and then I ended up bringing the sweater it's a little bit chilly so I ended up bringing the sweater when I was walking and so a uh, hack or a tip that I want to give you all is that you should maybe um, when, if you're if you're not attending the conference in person and it's virtual just bring your clothes to where you're planning on attending the conference from and then you can change um, at the location where you're going to be attending the conference so for me I changed in the bathroom here 
on the graduate um, student, you know, the graduate student um, lounge area. And that way I'm prepared with my blazer and I'm like professional and look like a professor when I'm presenting. Another tip that I have for you is that you honestly, if when you're doing virtual conferences, you only have to look good from the waist up, right? So they're only going to be looking at this area here. So um, for me, I'm actually wearing some sneakers and um, some khakis alongside my blazer and my button up shirt because they're only going to be seeing my waist up on Zoom. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little bit nervous just because I didn't fully present my work. Obviously, I have my PowerPoint, but I didn't like you know, present and actually um, practice what I'm gonna say. So I'm actually doing that right now. And I know it's a bad idea. Don't do this when you're presenting, prepare ahead of time. So I'm just gonna kind of go with the flow and um, say what comes to my mind. Um, I'm currently working on this project anyway, so it's freshly on my mind. Started to make sure that we are on time. I to share and then go into personal things that happen in their sex life. Generational experiences, cultural memories, and a sense What's up guys, so it's been a few days since the Yale conference that I attended last week. Um, actually, the presentation went really well, people were recept receptive of my presentation. The topic of my talk was on PhD students and their first year experiences specifically black indigenous and people of color and so um, I pretty much shared how these students brought a lot of information a lot of knowledge and skill sets to um, educational spaces obviously in this case PhD, PhD programs that faculty staff should capitalize on to make the first year experience for BIPOC students um, even better because um, this, pro this project really came out of my personal experience as a first year um, Mexican student who identifies as low income, first generation, and how I faced some challenges alongside one of my co-authors. And so we wanted to just kind of um, provide this assets-based approach to what BIPOC students are bringing to these educational spaces. I did want to end this video by kind of giving you some insight on the importance of presenting at conferences. And so as a PhD student in particular, you should be looking to share your knowledge that you have gained through these research experiences on different platforms, right? And so obviously I chose to do this virtually because of the format of this conference, but later on this month, I am presenting at the this national conference for education um, in, the phys in a physical sense. So I'm gonna be hosting a round table of that same project that I presented at Yale. But you should be presenting at conferences for a couple of reasons. So the first one is obviously to just kind of share your insights, what you've gained from your projects, but also to build your networks. Because in academia, especially if you wanna become a professional professor, you're going to need to build this um, group of people that are going to be able to support you as you go through your journey of gaining tenure track as you work towards becoming a tenure track professor. So you want to make sure you have that network of support, but also those people that kind of interact with your field of study. So um, a lot of the time when you're writing these research papers, you are in conversation with what everybody's saying, what everybody's arguing in that field. And so you want to make sure that you are in conversation, not only um, in these papers you're writing, but also in the physical sense. So have these conversations at different conferences with these people that you admire, that you look up to in your field. And that's one of the assets of, um, of presenting at conferences. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next video.